Hello, welcome to First Thoughts. I'm Connor Izagari. I'm Caleb Lusher. And today we're discussing the 37th film in the long-running Godzilla franchise, Godzilla Minus One. A, I would say, surprise hit that kind of came out of nowhere, at least in America, and dominated uh, the critic, uh, the critics and fans alike and delivered what might just be the greatest Godzilla movie ever made. Uh, there is certainly an argument there. Uh, holy shit. I, I didn't know anything about this until you brought it to my attention and suggested we maybe do it on this show if we could both find a way to see it. And then my draft house picked it up. So I was like, all right. And holy hell, like I was mesmerized from the second this started. It, it's, it just, it does everything a Godzilla movie should do. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. So like this film got on my radar because like, I've always like had a lot, you know, I haven't watched a lot of the films since I was a kid, you know what I mean? A lot of the original films since I was a kid. Um, so, I'm, you know, I, I, my, I'm not exactly like, I would say an expert on this stuff. Um, so I haven't, you know, I wasn't really, I hadn't seen Shin Godzilla, which was the film one before this, but I heard Shin Godzilla was really good. So I didn't, I didn't rectify that one. Um, but like at first this wasn't really on my radar. I saw that, oh, okay. You know, Toho's making our Godzilla film. Cool. Um, but then I start, I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, let me watch the trailer. And the trailer blew me away. I was like, this looks really freaking good. And then I saw people starting to talk about on, you know, on, uh, Twitter, which based off news with Musk might go away soon. Um, who knows? Um, <laughs> but I was seeing, you know, people react. Yeah. If you know, wonder what I'm talking about, just look at why there's certain big studios not advertising on Twitter. You'll, you'll see that. Um, but, um, I was seeing people's reactions of, and like people were freaking out about it. And then the reviews were coming. I was like, okay, this is getting some good buzz. I, you know what? Let me rectify this. Let me finally, after years of not really, you know, seeing um the original, you know, Japanese films as since I was a kid. Let me see if it's playing near me. And if I can, let me let me fucking see a true, like in my opinion, a very true, authentic Godzilla film from Toho in theaters. Luckily, a theater was playing near me, the center mark that I'm close to. I was able to see it. And yeah, I I was just blown away. Um, you know. What I will say to the people is like, hey, when you're going to this, this is not the current American run of films. This is not favoring spectacle over, you know, characterization over substance, if you will. This is favoring story and characters. I mean, it's and I said it feels very thematically like the original film. Um, it's favoring story. It's favoring characters so that when you do get those scenes with Godzilla and Destruction, they do hit. They are filmed fucking well and they hit. But for those who don't know, and I say this because there was sure enough a, a kid and a dad that left the theater I think like halfway through the movie. Um, this is first off. Hold on, folks. This is a Japanese film. They don't talk English. Oh, my God. I know you have to read subtitles. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> keep that in mind. And again, this is not the American style where we're going to get a really big Godzilla smashing things up for like two hours. Just, you're not getting that. So just keep that in mind going to the theater seeing this. We are getting is a very good film, a well-made film with Godzilla in it that feels thematically like the original one, which hasn't they haven't been able to pull that off since the original one came out back in the 50s. So you're telling me that a film by a Japanese director, which is the 33rd film overall in a Japanese franchise about a Japanese creation made as an allegory for a Japanese tragedy is going to be in Japanese. That's that's insane. I know. Plot, plot twist, right? <laughs> God, people are fucking stupid. You know that? Um... You know what's funny? <laughs> when I bought the tickets, they told me on Cinemark, um, Japanese 
uh, spoken with English subtitles. They let you know when you buy it, like, hey, like, in case you don't know, not the Godzilla you're probably thinking it is. God. That's so annoying. I I wish I'd seen somebody. Nobody walked out in my theater because people in Austin, Texas understand that cinema is a global art. But um, anyway, um, yeah, this film was astonishing. Um, Let's talk a bit about our respective histories with Godzilla. Um, Neither of us are that well versed in the, you know, 37 films that have come out since 1954. I've not seen, I've seen the trickle of that. Um, But when I was a kid, I had a PlayStation 2 game called Godzilla Save the Earth, which was like a kind of Mortal Kombat, but like with Godzilla characters. And that's how I learned about a lot of these guys, you know, Gigan, King Ghidorah, Jet Jaguar, Mecha Godzilla, Space Godzilla, Hedora, Megalon. Like, that's how I found out about who these characters were. And they were neat. And I was like, oh, there's movies. And then I watched some of them and I'm like, oh, these look terrible. <laughs> because, you know, I'm a kid. I'm watching a movie from like the 60s where it's a guy in a rubber suit, like forcing a, you know, fake tree down the gullet of a fake monkey. I'm like, oh, this is this is great. uh but you know i grew up i've been watching a few of them lately uh i watched godzilla raids again which was the 1955 sequel to the original film and disclaimer i still have not seen the 1954 godzilla i know sue me but uh raids again was terrible because they were like we just killed godzilla but not really so let's try to kill him again and they kept reusing godzilla footage from the first movie saying like like it's like the the characters watching on the news video footage of Godzilla from the first movie and then commenting on it. That's most of the movie. Oh, sweet Jesus. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> uh, I've seen Rodan, which was better than I expected. Uh, Rodan, Mothra, King Ghidorah, they all got their own movies before they synced up with Godzilla, which is pretty sweet. And uh, oh, the... mm-hmm. I was going to say the whole like when Godzilla came out, man, like, yeah, they got their own movies. You had Gamera became like this weird spinoff that like actually thrived for quite a bit. I think it actually also got a recent one with Godzilla, a recent like Netflix anime thing. So like, you know, like, yeah, man, when Godzilla hit like the Kaiju craze in Japan, like fully took off. Oh yeah. And Godzilla, for those of you who don't know, but I mean, if you're listening to a podcast about a Godzilla movie, you probably have some knowledge of the character emerged from atomic testing outside Japan it was an allegory for the the monstrous radiation of the atomic bomb that changed Japan in you know spiritual ways, physical ways, mental ways, and this was the ultimate you know worst case scenario for a nuclear disaster. And what would happen is you know giant nuclear lizard emerges from the ocean and destroys the city. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Rodan was this big ass pterodactyl that emerged from a volcano and was like, Rawr! and then they're like, how do we fight this thing? And then another one popped out and they're like, oh, they're in love. And one of them died. So the other one just like jumped into, back into the volcano to commit suicide. Like, I will not live without my mate. That was an odd movie. <laughs> the, the, some of those movies get weird. Um, like I said, so like, I know with, like with me, like I used to watch these films all the time. I mean, I think it was like Sci-Fi Channel here or USA or whatever to like show them constantly. And I used to love watching them as a kid. And, and I remember my dad watching them with me because we just laugh at like the, you know, the horrendous English dubbing of like them talking. And then the, the looks would very much be not moving anymore, but they keep going. Um, and then just as a kid, again, I was a kid. So I was like laughing at that, but then just being enthralled with like the action and when Godzilla would come on and do his thing and, you know, fuck these di- these things up. I was gonna say dinosaurs, but I mean, yeah. um, you know, fuck fuck these things up. And you know, like I said, as I got older, I never really got fully immersed. And now that I'm like, you know, I'm Jesus, it's December now. Yeah, I'll be turning 31 this month. Um, I'm not exactly like rushing to try to get through all these films as adults now. As an adult now, you know what I mean? Like, it it passed me. I'm okay with it. I still absolutely have a lot of love for Godzilla and kaiju films in general, which for those who are wondering, that's uh like basically big monster films. Um, that, like I said, once Godzilla came out, especially the sequels and became very popular in Japan, 
Um, like you said, they came out with spinoffs for various monsters themselves, like King Ghidorah, Rodan, Mothra. Um, I think maybe Destroya. I don't know if he got one or not. Um, no. Um, and then, like I said, Gamera was another one that was its own entity, but kind of gets grouped into the Gazelle thing because it's a it's a kaiju beast that you know fights big monsters. Um, and it's just a very popular uh, genre in Japan. Um, with that, do I turn? Am I quick to be at the theater when, like, you know, the American Godzilla run that we've been having or Pacific Rim comes out? Yeah, because I still, you know, the kid in me at the end of the day just loves watching these big ass monsters fight each other in the large scale destruction that comes with it. It's just it's such a joy to watch still to this day. Yeah, you know, I. I I'm still, you know, I'm not going to sit down and watch all of these movies one after another, but like when they, you know, come my way, sure. I'll sit down and watch an hour and a half of Godzilla bucking up, you know, a uh, big like underground monster with drills for hands, which was Megalon. That was a real, that one's not very well received, but um, I watched funnily enough. The first cinematic Kaiju is not Godzilla. It's King Kong. Mm-hmm. 1933. And they cross paths in 1963 in one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, King and Kong, Kong versus, versus Godzilla. Godzilla. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that one's interesting because there's two versions of the movie. There's one where Godzilla destroys this monkey, and there's another where the monkey, I, I think it's a draw because America was like, we're not going to lose. And Japan was like, well, we're not going to lose. So they made a compromise movie, which is the version I saw where they're fu- like, the whole movie is going nowhere. And then in the last 10 minutes, they they encounter, they have a brief fight, and then they're like, eh, not worth it. And they just kind of give up. It was really bad. Uh, thankfully, we got a proper Godzilla versus Kong uh, a couple of years ago. Um, God, yeah, I fucking love that guy. I, that movie was so good. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to get, I want to talk about the, the, uh, the recent run in a minute. But first, you mentioned Destoroyah. I I love that movie. Godzilla versus Destroya. By the way, you got to say it like that. It's not Destroyer. It's spelled Destroya. So that dude. Oh yeah. No, and what I love, what I love with these like these, and they even do it in this new one. Godzilla minus one. They will like if you go like all this Japanese, and because these are made up fucking names and made up things it will be like japanese and got to that or destroy <laughs> and you're like all right it just always sticks out every time you watch it even the dubs they do the same damn thing well one thing i i like that the uh the roland emmerich 98 film did not a lot that i like about that movie but one thing i do like is that the creature is very much named gojira but the Americans mispron- mishear that and say, what, was that Godzilla? All right, we'll just call it that. And someone's like, no, it's Gojira, you moron. Like, mm-hmm. I like was- that. Yeah. And what's funny is, like, we should know that because they're, especially uh, in, in the world of metal, there's a band from France called Gojira, and they named it very much after Godzilla. They're a really good band, too. Um, well, this, you know, what, next year will be, what, 70 years of Godzilla? So, like, yeah, know how to say it. Yeah. Ooh, 70 years. I wonder if we'll get a fancy box set or something. Maybe. That'd be a good time to maybe maybe be a good time to maybe unpack the original for uh, for the podcast. Yeah, I just thought about that. I mean 1954, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw that. Mm. Uh but destroy. So this movie is insane. First off, I don't know what happened in the previous Godzilla movie because I don't know what that was. I don't know if there's an ongoing canon or what. I just, I assumed every film it's, stands on. So it, it, there's different eras. You, you had like from, like, you had your Showa era, which was the original run, then your, your, your High C, High H E I S C I. I don't quite know how to pronounce it, unfortunately, but I think that was the following era of films. The Showa was like actual, like, they tried to follow a storyline, not very well, but they tried. The era that I can't really pronounce, that's us for an H. Um, they were more standalone-ish in their approach, like nothing really connected. After that, I believe it was called Millennium. I looked all this stuff up. I've I've gone way deep on the research here. Um, the Millennium era, which was pretty much like I think I believe like the nineties into the two thousands. Um, 
they would do a mixture of like have like trilogies that would are like you know a couple films would be connected and then like they revamp it and then do another set of films that connected or something like that and that was that 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 was that era um it did outlast the american remake a little bit but i think um it even at one point ended um and uh as far as his shin godzilla and now the newest one it's not really being called anything it's just toho produced godzilla films like no there's no error attached to that because Shin Godzilla came out so long after their last one, and then this one had a pretty good gap between it. So, probably the safe safe route. I mean, I've I've always just kind of taken them one at a time as like their own film, which is I think probably the best way to do it. Uh, it opens with a super irradiated, about to explode into a global nuclear meltdown. Godzilla. He's like bright red. He's about to burst, and they're trying to figure out how do we cool this guy down. Meanwhile, little Zilla, like little Godzilla, is kind of howling around doing his thing. He's all happy. And this like prehistoric bug gets like absorbs some of that Godzilla radiation or something and turns into this giant kaiju called Destoria. And he can absorb nuclear energy. So he starts fighting big Godzilla and absorbs like the power and Godzilla has a meltdown, but not that big of a meltdown and doesn't blow up the world. But before that, Destoria killed little Godzilla, like stomped him to death. And everyone was like, no, he was just a, he was just a baby. And big Godzilla is like, my baby boy. And like, it was so ridiculous, but like, you really felt it. And it was, it was cool. (laughs) Nice. Okay. Yeah. Look, this, there's some fun and look, you're this is over a thirty, like I said, a thirty you said this thirty seventh or thirty third film, I forget. It's the thirty third in the Toho run, thirty seventh overall if you count the American films as well. Okay. So just counting right now, I'm not we'll we'll keep American separate. Thirty third in the Toho run, like yeah, I would expect it to get like that. It's kinda like when horror films keep going, you know, they get those horror series that go and they get some interesting plot lines. I'm sure it's the same thing. We were sitting there going, ooh, they're running out of ideals. They were they were just doing whatever worked to get this movie going, weren't they? Well, one of the movies that um Takashi Yamazaki, who made this one, um, he was this is another case of the fans getting behind the camera and getting to make their own vision, which is fantastic because he was a he's a big Godzilla fan. And one of the movies that he took big influence from is a 2001 movie that has one of the craziest titles I've ever heard. Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, colon, giant monsters all out attack. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's part of the Millennium area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was actually a really good one. A lot of people say it's a really good one. I've heard it's a really... I have it as part of one of... Uh, Toho did a whole bunch of double feature Blu-rays that I keep stumbling upon. I'll, I grab them whenever I see mm-hmm. them because I'm like, hey, why not? And I have that one. I want to watch it. But I just love that title. Like, Jesus Christ, you could... Trim that back at least. Just how about just Godzilla giant monsters all had attack? Like Mothra and Ghidorah dude, gotta dude. be they gotta get double billing on this. <laughs> dude, it, it got it got ridiculous after a while. Yeah. Uh, I think one of them, I don't know which one, but in one of them, real Godzilla fucks up American 98 Roland Embrick Godzilla in like <laughs> one shot. Just called him Zilla, and he just like you know takes the crown back. <laughs> Yeah, I forget which one it was. It was part of that Millennium era that like Toho saw that and went, "Yeah, we're going to do, do something about that in our upcoming Godzilla film." I just picture like Godzilla '98 comes out. I think it did pretty decent at the box office, but not nearly as much as they wanted. It was critically reviled, and I imagine like Universal, I think, did it. Maybe I don't. Don't quote me on that. But uh, they're having the meeting to like discuss the sequel, and like the door kicks open, and it's like two Japanese men and they just walk inside. They grab the contract. They rip it in half. They take back whatever like physical rights to the property or something. They don't say a word to anybody. (laughs) They just leave. And like, that's how I picture like American studios losing the rights to make any more Godzilla movies. (laughs) It's probably not how it went down. Okay, it may have been the movie Godzilla 2000. Sorry, I was looking it up. Godzilla 2000? 
Oh, sweet. I have that Which, one. Yeah, also known as Godzilla 2000 Millennium because it kicks the millennium period of the franchise. I uh, I had that one. I watched it on, on tape as a kid. I remember really liking that one. I, I think there's like this alien spaceship that crashes in the middle of Tokyo and then it morphs into this giant creature called Orga. But uh, I don't remember any, anything else, but I just remember thinking like, oh, that's cool. So. Okay, so I'm so I'm, I'm on the Wikipedia, so just bear with me, guys. So yeah, you have the Showa era, which was from 1954 to 1975. That has a nice Blu-ray release, apparently, from Criterion. Um, Toho rebuted in 1984 with the Return of Godzilla, which was the the high side high C era, and that was, went from 84 to 95. It took a break, and then like I said Millennium era was 99 to 2004, so their shortest era. With Godzilla 2000. Um, and then this current era is Re Raiwa R E I W A. Again, sorry for if I'm butchering this, but that's what they're calling this current era that has currently just these two films, Shin Godzilla and the one we'll be mostly talking about. Um, oh, but they are including the um the trilogy of Godzilla films that they the animated ones that they did, those are included mm-hmm. in it as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Most of these are like pretty entertaining once you get to the monster stuff. But the thing that for me has always plagued the Godzilla franchise is finding the balance between human like relatability and emotional connection and big ass monster. And Godzilla minus one accomplished that in spades Uh, with a very well written script and believable characters and likable characters to the point where like Godzilla is destroying People you actually care about. <laughs> uh, so way to go. They finally managed to make Godzilla a scary bad guy. Yeah, no, they did a good job. And um, I think what's interesting is that now it's kind of at a point in this franchise where they've, they be, we've, they've become almost intertwined with now the American stuff. Because um, like you said, when the 1998 remake came out is you know that was after years of i think believe american producers being like hey can we do this and japanese obviously you know, or sorry japan being very protective for very obvious reasons godzilla kind of telling them no 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 finally going okay fine and then that came out and they went what have you done to our thing you're never getting it back <laughs> and then i they i guess we did some convincing because you know, obviously, American came back strong with the 2014 Godzilla reboot. That was a huge hit. People really liked it. We actually liked the Godzilla in that film. Um, we well, looked like fucking Godzilla. Toho. That was a good start. Yeah, <laughs> which prompted Toho to say, like, okay, maybe we should ri- revive it. Like I said, after 2004, they didn't. The, when the Millennium Era was over, they pretty much didn't do anything with Godzilla. They had they had retired the character themselves. Um, and so they said, Look, let's let's see about bringing this back. And then that's when they came back strong themselves with Shane Godzilla, which was a huge hit. And since then, we've now had this wonderful universe where you have a strong, you have the monster verse for us that has consisted of, you know, Godzilla, Kong, Skull Island, um, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Godzilla versus Kong, the upcoming Kong, Godzilla, Kong, New Empire that we just got a trailer for yeah. that's going nice and strong. And on the Japanese side, you know, like I said, they have Shin Godzilla now, and now they got, you know, this the one we're talking about, Godzilla Minus One. That's been a huge hit for them as well. They have the Netflix thing, I guess I did really well for them with the trilogy of animated films and the TV and the anime as well. So like now there's just like it's like almost this odd like relationship that has formed now where we're just kind of like everyone's winning, you know, on both fronts with Godzilla. We got if you want the big, just you don't give a, like you said, you don't give a shit about the human characters because they have struggled with it very hard. Um, watch the American ones. That's not even me trying to be a dick. It's just true about the American ones. And I say that as someone who's a big fan of the recent run of American films. Um, but this one gave us kind of what we've been wanting, which was like, hey, we want Godzilla to fuck shit up. We also kind of would like some human characters to give a shit about. To me, it's kind of like... Uh... You know, Universal had, you know, Lugosi's Dracula. And then over in England, Hammer Productions had, you know, Christopher Lee's Dracula. And everybody was kind of getting what they wanted. You know, if you wanted more vicious, violent Dracula, you watched that. If you wanted more subtle Hayes Code Dracula, I don't really get why you would. But, you know, you get, watch, watch some American, American Dracula. 
Uh, it's cool when you've got two, you know, two competing studios making similar stories and taking their own approach to that. And that just gives you more content to absorb. Yeah. And I think what helps in this case, it's, it's not like either one's half-assing it, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like I said, we'd both just, you know, watch the trailer for the upcoming Godzilla uh, Kong, the new Empire, and you can tell they're going just as all out with that as they have with the past couple of films on the American side. And as we've seen with Toho, you know, this was not a half-assed Godzilla film. This, like I said, this was a fan that wanted to put his stamp on the franchise and delivered a hell of a film that, dare I say, Oscars, get your head out of your asses and recognize this goddamn thing at the Oscars. I know you won't because it's a Godzilla film. Oh, but yeah, a good never, not, not even the American ones have ever gotten any recognition for like visual effects. Nothing. That's sad. No, the fuck, the fucking small own asshole, assholes board members going to be like, what's this? Oh, God, get this out of here. Give us real foreign art. <laughs> uh, Give us cinema. It's like, no, that's if you actually gave it a shot, you would see this as cinema. And also, again, for those who don't know, look at the Rotten Tomato score. I hate Rotten Tomatoes, but holy shit. I think this is a 97 critic score and 98 audience score. Like, when the fuck has that ever happened? Yeah, here's the critics' consensus on that. With engaging human stories anchoring the action, Godzilla Minus One is one kaiju movie that remains truly compelling between the scenes of mass destruction. Very true. Very accurate. Uh... Yeah, yeah, let's get into agree with them on that one. Me too. I actually before we do that, I did want to ask you of the three Godzilla movies we've gotten in the MonsterVerse, Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters and Godzilla versus Kong, which of those is your favorite? Oh, Godzilla versus Kong. It's actually so far they've gotten better for me. Like it's actually sometimes kind of hard to watch the 2014 one because like as much as good as I do think the film is, it bugs me how much Gareth Edwards like just fucking cuts away from the mo- like as soon as they're getting ready to attack, he's like, and we're going to cut away. I'm like, no, I want to see that. I don't care about Aaron Taylor Johnson's bland ass character. Um, but uh, and you know, King of the- King of the Monsters rectified that for me, and I was like, oh, here we go. I'm I, I still remember seeing you know Ghidorah pop up in the theater. I'm like, oh. I mean, Godzilla vs. Kong just gave me everything I fucking wanted. And also, Adam Ringard directed Mad Respect because we went to the same film school. So good for, good, good for him. Nice. Nice. Uh, 2014's Godzilla. I'm, I'm glad it was a return to form. I'm glad that the design was an accurate portrayal of the character. They got the roar right, finally. And uh, I do think that they killed the wrong character. I think that Aaron Taylor Johnson should have died towards the beginning and Brian Cranston should have continued on as the lead. I think that would have been more compelling. He's the guy who, you know, found all this and like had a more deeper connection to Godzilla. Cause that's, you know, he killed his wife that I think that would have been a smarter move, but um, also the villain in that, or like the monster and that's called the Muto. And that just makes me think of inherent vice with Josh Brolin screaming Muto, Muto Penakeko in the diner. So that Penakeko. That killed that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also I'm like, I remember thinking like you did a you did Muto, you could have just maybe done one of the more recognizable villains like Rodan or something. Like Well, I didn't like that in the trailer, like the wings kind of looked like Mothra. So I was thinking, like, oh shit, it's Mothra. But then I'm like, no, it's like a praying mantis thing. <laughs> they, uh, they made up, which admittedly is probably like the one thing you could say is I have issues with with the American side of things, is that it's a lot of made up kaiju. I don't know if that just has to do with Toho saying, hey, you get Godzilla, we're not giving you fucking everything. Like, fuck you. Well, I mean, that's I think that's if that is the case, it's definitely softened because King of the Monsters gave us Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan, and we got Mecha Godzilla in the Kong one. So I, I think that I don't think that's yeah. the case. I, I think it was probably the case for the first one. They were probably like, We'll give you Godzilla, let's hold up. Cause you know, they were probably so being like, You fucked this up once. Like, we'll give you Godzilla again. Don't do this. And then once that was a huge success, they were like, okay, we'll start licensing out the other characters to use. Godzilla 98 is like finding out the roommate you thought you could trust just sold your TV for crack. And then the 2014 Godzilla is that same roommate after rehab begging you to trust them again. 
because they need a place to stay. And you're like, oh, I'm God. not going to get again, but f- fucking fine. And then they are like, they end up being your best friend. <laughs> oh, God. I was about to say, not how that's going to turn out, but I was almost about to relate to my own shit that happened recently in my personal life. I was like, except it won't have it that ending. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, unless New Empire turns out to be absolute shit, I'd say it's, I'd say the relationship's going pretty good right now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was like, I, you describe, I was like, wait, this, I was like, wait, this really is to someone that you know about that happened very recently to me, personally with yeah. someone. I try not to let my my metaphors and my allegories be too on the nose for what we're going through in life, because you know, got to maintain a little bit of illusion here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't know anyone who's doing crack. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm not alluding to that. Different thing. Yeah, King of the Monsters is probably my favorite one because I was not expecting it to go as like hard into the Godzilla mythology as it did. I mean, we got the music again. We got a fucking badass cover of Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla in the end credits uh, sung by Serge Tankian, which was fucking awesome. And then Ghidorah looked incredible and you had like nuclear Godzilla and like that that movie fucking ruled. I'll never understand Dude, yeah. why it tanked at the box office. That movie was awesome. Yeah, I was there. I was like, how did this tank? I felt bad for Michael Doherty because, you know, he hasn't been able to... Well, I felt bad for him next. I'm like, dude, he went from, like, trick-or-treat and Krampus now he's doing this? Hell yeah. And then tank, I was like, like fuck. This, was, this is why he keeps talking about sequels to films that aren't going to get sequels. Stop cock-teasing me, Michael Doherty. I'm going to kill you. Um, trick-or-treat 2. Show me footage. I don't believe you. Um, and, he's and doing it with Krampus, by the way, now. Well, uh, I can see that getting a sequel, but you know, well, I don't know. Pick a different holiday. Yeah. Give us one for that. Give a, give us a, I don't know. Give us a Labor Day movie. You can't have no, Thanksgiving. Dude, Eli Roth has claimed now. that one. Oh yeah, we're gonna Thanksgiving too now. Eli Roth has claimed. Apparently, that wanted. apparently there are gonna be leftovers. So yes, there will be seconds. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, dude, I agree with you. I remember being in the theater and like, first was like, God, Rodan, like here we go, and then like. The, uh, Ghidorah's entrance in the movie is one of the most badass entrances. Like, oh god! He, like the movie knows is like, hey, this is Ghidorah. Like, we know you're excited for this one, and they don't hold back. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. I yeah, that movie was fucking. And I love that Godzilla versus Kong built on that by making like Mecha Godzilla's brain based, on, you know, like built from King Ghidorah's brain. So it was already like you know, hating Godzilla for destroying it. Like that was really smart and really cool and was executed so well. So yeah, both those movies yes. are just like even ground for me, but like King gets a little bit extra for the, for the music. Yeah. It, it's, I think it's got Godzilla vs Kong just was like, all I think was like, God, this better not fucking fill me. Like I better get this and I better not wait forever to watch these two fight. That was my worry. And then like, God, this phone delivered. You get a little bit of setup, obviously, just enough to get this thing going. How are we getting these two together? And man, when you get that first carrier fight, when they're on like the carriers duking it out in the water, look, one that could have hit a little home for me because I am in the Navy and I was stationed on aircraft carrier before I went to shore duty. Um, so I could think it was like, God, I hate to be like in my rack or something at that time trying to sleep in it. <laughs> Um, but how that fight scene, and then like God, when they do the all out brawl in the city and then team up to take out Mecha Gaza, yeah, that film fucking delivers in spades. It does, and I'm I'm glad that that, and that was in the middle of COVID and it was a box office hit. You know, Godzilla that like was the first glimpse that the movie theaters were gonna make it, and that made me really happy. Yeah, it was Godzilla. Yeah. It was, you know, Gave us hope. <laughs> Guys, a little proof again, you know, that I remember that and you know, 2022 proved that like horror is what's going to keep people going through the box office. People Godzilla is not straight up horror. It, it tends to get lumped into the cat into the genre um because it's a monster movie, uh, through and through. So it just goes to show you that, like, yeah, genre film will thrive no matter what. That is what gets butts and seats. Yeah. He's a god for a reason. Ah, all right. With that, let's finally talk about minus one. Um, so this t- this film takes place right at the end of World War II. 
And our hero is a uh, kamikaze pilot who was too cowardly to go through with it. His name's uh, Shikishima. And he spends the entire movie dealing with severe survivor's guilt over what happens when he lands his plane on an island claiming it's defective and the mechanics like, no, it's not you fucking coward. <laughs> There's no, cause you know, failing to go through with a kamikaze attack is the ultimate dishonor. And in Japan, if you don't have honor, you're less than nothing. And people treat him like that when they find out what he, you know, failed to do. They look at him like he's a worm. And yeah, actually you think that, that that's the minus one part of the title. Maybe he doesn't. Have, he doesn't have honor, so he's minus one. That you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. We don't get an explanation like, like, on what what that means at all. Yeah, it's it's probably honestly it's probably something that I'd be like, oh, that's what they mean by it. But yeah, whatever. Um, dude, I this opening scene, how they how they build this up, like you know he he lands and he sees the fisherman. You're like, oh shit, something's going to happen. And dude, so one thing I really appreciate, and this opening establishes it, this is the first time, because even the American films don't do this, the first time in a very long time that they made Godzilla terrifying. I can't speak on behalf of Shin Godzilla because I haven't seen that one yet. But for me, in the thing, like he made Godzilla fucking horrifying. When you when you hear something like, hey, turn the light on. And he turns the light on, and Godzilla's just there roaring in his face and fucking takes him out. I was like, holy shit, here we go. Well, I like how the movie is told through the eyes of people who have never met this thing before. Like, this is new to the entire world. And Japan's, like, learning about this gargantuan creature as it's you know, attacking them for the first time. When we do first meet Godzilla, I was like, oh no, he's only like 20 feet tall. I was kind of bummed. Like, are we going to have a short Zilla? And uh, thankfully, no. Admittedly, the Toho, yeah, I was say, admittedly, the Toho films, because of how they build Godzilla, he always seems short, but he's a lot bigger than he ever usually appears to be. Yeah. He's a, he's a grower, not a shower. Yeah. Uh, um. No, I did like how, like, I what I like is that obviously it's not a sequel to the original film in the sense that it takes place right after. But I like how what they did keep was this idea that like, there is this legendary creature out there, and I because I like that with obviously they're like is that Godzilla and like oh that's just a myth like you can tell like okay so somehow along the way this thing has been heard about and talked about by people and feared, but it's just yeah. a myth like no one truly knows about it. And yeah, yeah it's like, it's so cool. It's like the Kraken or or Bigfoot, you know, just this like this creature that shows up and eats all the fish. Like that's that's all it is. But they just think like, oh, it's no, that's 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 local legend. But nope, he's <laughs> that's his island. <laughs> he's, uh, he's pissed. He fucks them, dude. When he's like stepping on them and eating them, and then like he's using the toe. I'm like, dude, I would just stayed in that fucking trench and just. Laid down and hope to God, guys, I didn't see me. Well, and he's like, he's not even eating them. He's just grabbing them with his jaws and flinging them like a hundred miles away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, Shikishima is told, you know, get in the plane and shoot this thing. And he gets in the plane and he, he can't do it. And I'm thinking like, I don't think it's fair to blame him for that. Like that wouldn't have done anything. It's Godzilla. It, it wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, it wouldn't do anything. And then the actual, when they kept trying to blame him, I'm like, how about the guy that shot because he was so scared? I was like, because if you notice, Godzilla didn't see you guys in the trench. He was just looking around. You could have hidden in that trench. And he probably would have gone away. Probably. Probably. The image of uh, the mechanic guy, um, I, his name was um, Tachibana, like dragging all of his comrades <laughs> out of like the jungle, out of the ocean. And just lining them up, just like distraught and not really understanding what just happened and clearly wanting to blame somebody. And he just lo- unloads all of that on Shikishima. It's like, shit, dude. I'm, I, from that, I'm like, this is going to be an emotional movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah, and again, this is why I say, like, guys, this is not your uh, monster verse type of film. Because after this, we go wait a long time before we see Godzilla again and we get solid character work we get solid like what more insights to shikishima 
and like what's going on with him, how he's viewed by his community when he goes back, things like that. And yeah, it hits. Um, it all works. I was invested when his neighbor was like, dude, when his neighbor lady was like, my kids died and you couldn't do the one thing you're supposed to do. I was like, oh, yeah, that hurts. Yeah, but like, how do you, you know, when you're in that situation, when like your job is not fight for your country, die for your country. Like you are told, like you are going to fly into that ship and you're going to die. And it's going to be the ultimate honor to Japan. And you can't do that. Like, it, you know, Shigashima points out in the movie, like he says, like, I was not, I'm not supposed to exist. Like, I'm not supposed to be here. Like, that's a crazy <laughs> level of survivor's guilt that I wouldn't wish on anybody. I mean, holy hell. How do you comprehend the idea that like your life is meaningless because it was supposed to end there and now no one knows what to do with you. Like, yeah. Geez. And what I like geez. is that about halfway through the film, they start to flip it on the head and actually kind of say like, what right did the government have to tell people that, that no, you're not fight, You're dying. Like what, what right did you have to tell some young kid? Like, no, no, the only option is death. Like what? Like, I, I do like how the movie starts to flip on that and almost like these people, I mean, and obviously at this point it came out, I doubt very many people working on the film were, you know, involved in World War II, but I'm sure they had, you know, descendants and stuff like that, right? Um, you know, a younger generation kind of saying, like, a younger generation kind of looking at that Japanese government and going, like, what right did you have to tell people that? You know, what what made them so bad that they didn't want to do that because they wanted to go home to their families as well? Yeah, I love Shigashima's development over this movie as he does find something to live for and then something to die for. Like he does find that courage and find his purpose in life and his meaning. And it's kill Godzilla. <laughs> like he's yeah. the guy who can do that. Like I, I love how that all unfolds. Yeah, I like that. And I like how he starts to get his own family with uh, Nuriko, I believe was her name. Um, and it, uh, and and. And Kiko, and I, one of the scenes I really liked that hit was when she goes, Daddy, and he goes, Kiko, we've talked about this. I'm not your dad. I'm like, oh, oh, dude. I love how his friends are like, dude, what the fuck? Don't say that to her. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would you do that? <laughs> that was dark. I mean, the whole, re- like, yeah. the whole reason they all came together was that, you know, Tokyo had been, you know, bombed to shit in the war and everyone had lost everything. And like, Noriku just has this baby. It's not her daughter. Mm-hmm. Like she found somebody who said, please take care of my baby as they were dying. And she was like, I couldn't just abandon her. Like, damn, mm-hmm. man, that kind of like just that kind of situation. I can't, I can't fathom that. And no, it, it, yeah, it, it unfolds very, very good. It takes Shikishima a while to realize what he has and that he doesn't want to lose it. Yeah, well, and you you're you kind of understand because like obviously with that guilt of like he should have done what he's supposed to do, then you get that poignant moment where the guy gives him the pictures of all their families, of all the people that died on the island. So that racks on my guilt, like knowing like, and you understand why as hard and dark as it was for him to say that to that kid, you get it. He's trying to distance himself. He doesn't want to allow himself to have that kind of happiness and family when. He witnessed all these people die that did have families that did want people to go home to because in his eyes, he couldn't do his one job. You know, he yeah. he he didn't pull the trigger in that case. Um, and you so you get as dark as it is, and as much as it hurts, and you're like, Oh, dude, why would you say that to that kid? You understand completely where he's coming from. Just by looking at those pictures, you're like, fuck. God damn it. You get it. He, he doesn't he feels like he doesn't deserve to be happy. He doesn't deserve a happy ending with all these men who are supposed to be here. Don't get to have theirs. And that's that's fucking sad. But like you said, you know, you understand where he's coming from. You may not agree with it, but you understand where this guilt comes from. And then while this is all happening, uh, they're testing bombs in the Bikini Atoll and uh, they're nuking Godzilla on a daily basis. <laughs> and what's oh, that? I love what's how they usually real life, a real yeah. life thing. So that was a real life thing for those who don't know their history, which I'm learning very quickly in America. A lot of people don't know their fucking history. We seem to be very blind to that. Um, but, uh, Bikini Atoll was an operation we did, I believe, shortly after World War II. Um, or yeah, right we towards the end. Bigger and better bombs in the ocean. And yeah, <laughs> irradiating yeah. a big part of the ocean. 
And uh, yeah, not smart. Yeah, it wasn't smart like many things we've done, not smart at all, but something we did. And yes, the movie was able to use that as a way to say, for movie wise, this is waking Godzilla up. And now he's coming back even bigger and badder. Because Godzilla's whole thing is he can absorb radiation and it just makes him stronger. So when he's getting, you know, nuked on a daily basis, he's just absorbing more and more and more. And he emerges from the ocean like 500 times bigger. And the, holy shit, was that cool. It was like, oh boy, here we go. This is, this is, this is a god I can, I can worship. Yeah. Oh, dude, that scene when it's revealed, which by the way, I love his his buddies on the ship. They were fucking great. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the job of like, we're going to sweep the ocean for mines. And she's like, no, you're going to fucking die. And he's like, no, nah, we'll be fine. And yeah, his buddies like, you know, there's the gung ho veteran. There's the doctor. And then there's the kid. And they're all they become friends as they sweep for mines. And yeah, that, that was nice. Yeah. It was it was our camaraderie, a group to get behind. Yeah, it was very nice. And like you quickly learned for those who mind sweeping, by the way, is an actual um thing. The US Navy does it as well. And um, like in this movie, you don't use it actually is a lot it, there is a, obviously a huge risk with it, but it is safer than you think. Um, because the biggest thing in this movie shows it and we still do it to this day, you you use wooden boats because the mines pick up that we built that are in the ocean pick up on the metal metallic that's how they get set off so they purposely build the mine sweepers with wood because they can't get detected by that which causes them to not fucking explode immediately and for them to get found and get shot you know safely um just so you know a little fun fact about mine sweeping so um an actual real thing we still do sometimes to this day um but yeah i love the scene when it's revealed like the doc's like, hey, this is actually why we're out here as they're starting to hear more and more news about this creature, Godzilla, that is getting closer and closer to Tokyo and taking out these huge boats. Um, dude, that scene when Godzilla shows up and chases them in the fucking boat, I was like, guys, how are you getting out of this? How the fuck? There's so much more movie. How are we getting out of this? Yeah, that was fantastic. Uh just the the sheer size and how freaked out they were, and uh, yeah, I love the the the. Um, it comes back later when they like they throw the mine in his mouth and shoot it, and it like I didn't I didn't realize Godzilla heals quickly too. I thought that was cool. That was a, that was a very cool. Visual I think that, effect. I think that was part of the juiced up Godzilla, like because of all those nukes. It, like it it's accelerated his healing factor. Cause that shit was yeah when it blew up and I was like oh shit the gamma ray and you see it heal and he just starts chasing them. and I love how like he doesn't speed up to chase them it's just like he's taking his time like he's like having fun with this he's like keep shooting me I'm going to get you and I'm going to take you out I love when uh, support shows up like the you know the navy shows up and Godzilla just like bricks the fucking freighter in half <laughs> like, dude oh no. god. He's oh, like, boy. yeah, no. The way he tosses things around, like when he attacks their, they have their, you know, their uh, brother, sister ship, whatever with them. And it just, because there just comes up from the fucking ocean with his mouth and takes it and flings that bitch. I was like, Jesus Christ. It was so insane. I was like laughing to myself. I'm like, fuck, I'm having fun here. Like it was, I was engaged. It was great. Just like, you know, you got chills. You were like, ah, oh, this is, that's how, you know, that's, that's that's the sign of a great movie when you just are like not even conscious of the fact that you're reacting like that. Um, yeah. No. My favorite moment, hands down, is when Godzilla makes it to land and the fucking <laughs> music kicks in and you're just, you know, it's like, oh, fuck, here it is. I thought they weren't going to do it. I didn't think they were going to do the music and they did. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> dude, the music and then that dude, that city attack. Oh, Lee shit. He just comes in the way he was using his tail to fu- I love the news crew, but I believe it was an uh, uh, a nod to the original film. Um, because I think there was like a news crew that was filming in the original. Um, when they were talking about it, and you just see him, he's taking these buildings out and he's like whooping his tail. And at first you think, oh, he's gonna fuck them up, but he doesn't. But then you realize the support beams on the building are fucked, so they just start falling. 
I, for me, it was like the way he's just stepping on the crowd. Like they're fleeing and he's just stepping on like 50 people at a time. And you just hear like a crunch in the step. Like, Jesus. He does not. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. That dude, The way he would like, like flip that towel of his to destroy shit. He was just like, it was just like, bam. I'm like, Jesus. But then this gives us the big moment that we get in every Godzilla film. The goddamn heat ray. Holy shit. I don't recall it literally being a fucking nuclear explosion before. Uh, is that? I think that's new. <laughs> yeah, dude. Everything about. I think it's like, especially in almost every more recent Godzilla film, it's always a big moment to show him, like, do his heat ray moment. Because it's like, okay, here we go. The way they do this one, how like they're shooting at him, and they realize it's ineffective, and you just see the spikes popping up one by one, like it's charging. And the way he would just throw his head back and then shoot it out of his mouth. I was like, God, I was like, holy shit. And then, yeah, when it did it and the, the way it would like explode and then fucking pull everything back. Yeah. Dude, when, when uh, he saves Noriku, I don't, I don't know how the hell he found her in that crowd, by the way. Like that was a little, a yeah. little bit far fetched. Yeah. But, and he got uh, there really quick. He did. He did. He got there quick. But uh, when she, pushes him into the alleyway to save him and flies into the debris field. I was like, oh my God. Uh dude, you felt it, man. You felt it. You've been with these with these people. You like them. They were good together. And dude, both yes. me and Josh and the dude, me and Josh there just went, oh because we were like, no. <laughs> I was like, no. And then he I'm comes like, out he saved and, her. They put a life. Yeah. And then everything was destroyed and he just fucking collapses. He's he never told her he loved her, and now he's lost her, and it destroys him. Oh, dude, oh, when yeah, Akito's like, like, where's mommy? Oh, my God. <laughs> that and cute little child. Like, I know. And it's like right after you get the scene of him just absolutely losing it in the street, like just going, and you're like, oh, and then you have that scene. Where's mommy? You're like, oh, God, stop. God punching me, movie. Fuck. I can't believe that this year has had two highly emotional, like nuclear related movies about survivor's guilt and loss and emotion and regret. And yeah, this is the year. This is the year of the bomb. Yeah. And only one involves Godzilla. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, I love too, they- depending on Killian Murphy's um, dong. I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet. I did like the honest trailer. It's like, well, they thought we were going to kill a week in history class, but not anymore. <laughs> that was a good so I just, I, did, I didn't see the honest trailer for it. You know, I was like, let me watch this. I'm curious what they'll say. It's history. You can't spoil a biopic. That's that's my policy. Exactly. If, it's, if it's recorded history, spoil biopics as much as you want. Plus, look, if I'm doing anything that would like secretly, like if Chris Nolan knew, we kind of piss him off. It makes me happy. Uh, I love that they use like U.S. tension with so- with the Soviet Union to explain why nobody's coming to help them fight this giant lizard. It's like the Russians, yeah. don't wanna, the Cold War is getting in the way. <laughs> yeah, I love, love how basically like in this in this, which honestly, with how we act nowadays, I won't even be surprised it being the real reason. I love basically like, yeah, we have this this petty conflict. We cannot be involved with the giant monster that can literally shoot a nuclear fucking explosion out of its mouth. We can't get involved with that. Nope. And can heal itself. It's seemingly unstoppable. Well, Godzilla goes home content until he wants to fuck things up again. And the Japanese government refuses to do anything about this. So the civilians t- and the uh, veterans take matters into their own hands to create a plan to sink Godzilla and like kill him with pressure. Which was interesting. I like that. Uh, yes, and again, more good um, commentary in the scene where you do start to see kind of what would happen after World War II um, with Japan and really a lot of countries, unlike America, that seem to learn their lessons from these major wars, except us. It's kind of interesting how that happens. Um, you gotta lose a few before we start doing that. Yeah. Right. Um, but where they have that, like I said, that commentary about like the post-war of Japan and how 
people felt towards the government, how they probably still feel towards the government. I can't really speak on behalf of Japanese government in its current state. Um, but how people felt, how these veterans felt, even like you got this guy who used to be a captain, even he's kind of like saying like, look, you guys, I know you gave up a lot. Like I'm not here barking in order. I, the government turns back on us for all that we can to stop this thing. Will you help me? Like it, it's a really poignant scene in my opinion. If you again, if you just know a little bit about like Japan at that time and like what they're trying to say with this movie. Well, I love that you know when the scientist guy is like explaining his his plan. There's no assurances. There's no like, and this will kill it. And people are like, "How do we know this is going to work?" And he's like, "We don't, but it's all we've got. Like this is the best we can do. Like we don't know how to fight something like this. We're trying our best." I love the honesty in that. Like this is just yeah, we're throwing darts at a dartboard in the dark here. We don't know if we're gonna hit, but we gotta try. <laughs> yeah, like guys, we this is something we've never seen before. We don't know. Okay, we blew its head up with a bomb and it healed itself. We don't know what to do. Ah, uh, so I love that. Um, um, uh, Shikishima like overcomes the doesn't overcome it, but he like moves on a little bit and is like goes there and decides. I can do, I can destroy this thing and has them, you know, agrees to use a plane to distract Godzilla while they put him in, like get him in the right spot. But in reality, he's going to load it with bombs and kamikaze right into Godzilla's mouth. <laughs> Cause he remembered that the mine from the inside made, you know, damaged him. Uh, smart. And also like fucking full circle, like great writing. Like really, like I was impressed with the writing, like shit, this is a great arc. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you get to this really great part where he's like, and then you have him go back and get that mechanic and like get that guy on board, and then to, to like to see Shikishima like write the letter and like you know give his neighbor the kid and like you can just see the 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 fear and the the tread in his eyes that like yeah in his in his mind he's made up that I need to make amends for what I did so long ago. But now I have something to fight for. I don't want, and he says it. I don't want to die. I do love that he like in order to get um, Tachibana to find him. He he sent him a letter saying like it was all your fault. <laughs> he knew that he would find him to beat the shit out of him out of principle. Yeah. He was right. <laughs> that was great. Why'd you say that? It got you over here. <laughs> That was great. And yeah, he, he fixes his plane and tells him, you know, a little something that we find out later is we'll get to that. Yeah. But uh, we will. Plan- Which I will say my only like my new negative was that that in a certain letter. I don't know if it's just because of like being attuned to movies. So well. I was like, it's probably this. And I was right in both of those cases. But in the grand scheme of things, minor, minor fucking cribbles in a really great film. I agree. I did. I, I did wonder, like, mm, it felt a little Dark Knight Rises, e, but uh, I like that movie too. So, um, yeah. so the plan to sink Godzilla is uh, put into play, and uh, he shows up early and gets on land, and they're like, "What the hell do we do now?" And they're like, "We don't, <laughs> yeah. we don't know." <laughs> I like how they're truly like, "Oh shit, this was not part of the plan." <laughs> Godzilla I love how they didn't play like, fair. Yeah, I love how the announcers like take off now. Go, go, stop talking. Go, he's here. <laughs> yeah, and I like how you can do to show how terrifying this Godzilla is. His announcement is a fucking ship getting flung onto the pier, and you're like, oh shit, he's here early. I love that they all just like follow the ship with their eyes, <laughs> not saying a word. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Um, uh, damn, yeah. Uh, Shikishima gets in the plane, starts going to Godzilla, starts you know shooting at him to piss him off. It works pretty good. Godzilla starts following him, and they get to the ocean. They start circling him with the Freon gas, and they sink him like right as he's gonna do his nuclear blast. And he gets they get to the bottom. It doesn't do anything, so they decide to plan B is to raise him up real fast with a floaty, so the pressure change will kill him it's a solid plan but you know they don't know the physiology of this thing so they don't really know if this is no but i do 
I do love how on board everyone is. You get those moments like, are you sure? Everyone's like, just do it. Okay. And like, I love it. Like, no one's like questioning back. They're just like, look, we have to do something. So we're just all in on this plan. I love when this, the captain's like, all right, everyone brace because they have to cross each other. Which, um, being on a ship, I've done crossings before, not that fucking close. But, you know, I can tell you right now, it's not going to, it's going to feel like that. Crossing a ship, hitting it, you want to brace because your ship's going to move like a motherfucker. Nothing unites a country faster than a hundred foot tall nuclear lizard throwing ships into cities. <laughs> right. That'll get everyone on board to be like, yeah, okay, mutual enemy. Yeah, we got to we got to solve this. Um before we get to how they this character that pops um up here. Um we have a great scene during the meeting when they're getting ready to plan the night before. Where you know, the thing about the kid is that he hasn't been to war. He was too young to fight. So he has this thing where he wants to go to war and you have this really great scene where like they finally tell him like, "Hey, you're not going to be on the boat with us tomorrow." And he's freaking out and like, "Oh, take me, you know, I didn't get in." You get the really good line, you know, we're fighting for his future. Um and again, that mentality of like, you know, them letting them know, like, it's a blessing you haven't seen. The, it's a blessing you haven't seen. Well, it's a blessing you haven't seen what we have seen. Because we, you know, they know they have to carry that for the rest of their lives. You see it in Shikishima. He goes to sleep and dreams it. It's, there's no escape. Unlike for this kid, he gets to live a life he doesn't realize is quite privileged because of it. And you get that scene where he's like freaking out and it, it, it hits because like you, again, this film does a good job making you see every single side. Right, you see his side of this kid that wants to defend his country, and that's a no, a very noble, honorable thing. It is, but yeah. you also understand their point of view of like war is hell. You don't, you know, you're lucky you didn't get to see the, you saw the things that we saw and went through every day. Um, but then he gets, you know, now to bring it back to the scene, you get that great moment when like the cranes are breaking and it seems, oh shit, Godzilla's going to fuck these guys up somehow. And you hear the kid on the radio, and he has brought every tugboat in Japan with them to fucking help them with their plan. It's it's fucking great. Even I was like, you know what? You go, kid. Hell yeah. Yeah, I didn't even question like how quickly it, they set all that up. Like, you know, just I, the logistics of hooking up like a hundred tugboats to a <laughs> freighter will pull a giant creature out of the ocean, and it seems like they knocked that out in ten minutes. But you know what? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, they drag Godzilla up to the surface. The pressure injures him, but it doesn't kill him. And now he's really pissed. And he's going to nuke all of them. And everyone's like, I, I like how he's like frozen. Yeah, he's like all frozen. And you can just see the anger. She's like, I'm going to kill all of you now. And yeah, dude, yeah. the look when you can start seeing him do his thing and the, the look of like, oh, we're fucked. Shit. Yeah, some of them, they're taking their hats off and just like ready. They're all accepting like, well, this is it. And oh, yeah, they're doing the it's if you're in the military, it's very powerful what they're doing. But they're very taking their hats off and doing the salute as in if we're going to do this. Well, we've we've done our best. We're going to die with honor. It's 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 a very uh, noble thing when is given to Shikishima when he does it. He flies the, uh -huh. the plane into Godzilla's mouth, blows him up, destroys Godzilla. He did it. He killed Godzilla. I could not believe that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, and Godzilla no was going to... Dude, yeah. And got, like, he got him just in time because he was revved up. You know, I thought, like, is she because going to take, like, the brunt of this and die? Am I wrong about what I think he's actually going to do? I think that Takashi Yamazaki is a fan of Independence Day. Just want to throw that out there. Probably. That felt very much you know like what? Randy Quaid taking out the Area 51 ship, which I love. Hey, so, you know what? Honestly, he may be, and you know what? Who isn't? That's a great film. The sequel sucks, but the first one's great. Very, yeah, very true. But Shigishima parachuted out because the little talk that uh, I keep forgetting these guys' names. Uh, Hachibana had with him, mm -hmm. like, hey, this is an eject button. You need to live. Like I was wrong. Like this is you need to you need to survive. You got something to live for. Don't hate yourself. Like he kept like what a what a moment of uh validation. Yeah, and I like how they reveal that at the same time you see that Touch of Bombs on the radio the whole time, hoping to God he he did what he did. Yeah. And then when he hears them, they have a genuine moment of happiness. Cause I love that when they're like, you know, like so they do their hand salute to be, you know, to render him respect for what he did, and then someone goes. Hey, he's he ejected and everyone just starts like losing. Even I was like, yes, 
Yes, I was like, I do he's probably gonna do that. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, key to the city, fucking medal of valor, political office. Like this guy's life's about to get pretty damn good. Um yeah. and it even I, I do love how Godzilla better. like I yeah. love how you just Godzilla just crumbles. Like he's just there with half his head gone and then just fucking crumbles into the ocean. Well, like the it, it was like the radiation, like the nuclear blast got like forced back into like he had to swallow it and he just kind of crumbled from the inside, which was neat. And uh Shigashima gets even better news. Uh turns out uh what's Noriku Noriko is alive. She made it. She survived the uh, the blast in uh, Tokyo. She got some radiation sickness and she's missing an eye, but she's alive. I mean, yeah, a little sappy. I love about- but I was happy to see that she made it. Yeah. It's sappy, but what I like is that you see that thing on her neck. So it's hinted that it's not just radiation sickness. Something more is going on there. Especially being a Godzilla film, there's always going to be something oh, no. weirder going on. Um. So it's like it's sappy and she's gonna be late. And you're like, yeah, yeah, like it's sappy, don't get me wrong, but like you're happy. You're like, oh my god, he got his family here. Even if she's missing an eye now, the family is here. And then you get that teaser, and you're like, oh fuck, what's wrong with her? God damn it. And then we get a little close up of Godzilla's heart and it's bubbling. Yeah, you can't kill a god. (laughs) Nope, you can just. Yeah, you can just get it to go away for a bit until he comes back stronger than ever. Pretty much. The more you kill him, the bigger he's going to get. <laughs> yeah, and based off how this guy was in this movie, he's probably going to be even more pissed off. And considering how big of a global hit this was, we are going to get another one, and I want Takashi Yamazaki to do it. Oh my god, get the whole same creative team involved, please. Yes. I want direct C- I want same characters. I I yes, give me more of this Godzilla. This was this is one of my favorite films of the year. I was I loved this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one highly like snuck in for like favorite in the year films. Like, wow, this came out of nowhere. And it honestly it makes me want to go back and for sure watch Shin Godzilla and at least commit myself to this era of Godzilla films. Cause if Shin's even half as good, then I think we're just living in a great world now where we have awesome Toho backed Godzilla films and awesome, you know, American MonsterVerse backed Godzilla films. And I'll take the best of both worlds. Yeah. So will I. Uh, I think that about wraps us up here. Uh, go see this if you can find it. It's actually gotten a pretty decent uh, American release. It's in a lot of theaters. So go check it out. It's worth it. It's worth the spectacle. The visual effects are amazing for $15 million. It really makes me wonder, like, where the hell are those Disney budgets going? Because <laughs> this looked amazing for such a small amount of money. Uh, it, yeah, dude, that's another thing to talk about. We talked about this all year. Yeah, what are we doing in America that, like, we have to spend so much money for stuff like the Flash that looks like dog shit, and they spent less money on this, and Godzilla looks fucking good. All the scenes look great. The scenes of destruction look amazing. There wasn't a single moment that made me go, eh. Like the whole time, I was like, "Whoa, yeah, yeah." Um, so yeah, worth it for sure. Um, next week's releases, we get Yorgos Lanthimos's new film "Poor Things," starring Emma Stone, Willem Dafoe, Mark Ruffalo, and Rami Youssef. Looks bizarre to say the least. Uh, but that's Yorgos. All of his films are fucking weird and hard to explain. So uh, we may do that one. Um, and also, we're not going to do this one, but I plan on watching it because I'm a lifelong fan. But Mr. Monk's Last Case premieres on Peacock. I loved Monk. It was one of my favorite shows. I'm really looking forward to watching this. And uh, can't wait. Ah. So I'm glad you love Monk. I'm glad you get to enjoy that. I loved Monk. It was a great show. And uh, My grandmother liked Monk. She used to watch it all the time. She's dead now, but, you know, she likes Monk. Oh, okay. A lot of people's grandparents liked Monk. It's a grandparent show. It's like it's like the modern day murder she wrote. But you know what? I watched it yeah. with my grandparents, and we're gonna Fair watch enough. the movie because mom... we're excited. Fair enough. My mom watched Murder She Wrote. I used to hate that show a lot. I never liked that show. I think she did it. I think she was killing all those people and writing about it. Probably. But you know, what show yeah. I really hated, like absolutely despise that my mom watched. 
Yeah. Hercule Poirot. She just watched the British one. And God, did I hate that fucking thing. Uh, my my grandma loves Poirot. I, I, I'm not really that. I like the Albert Finney murder on the Orient Express, but that was it. I haven't seen. I don't really like the Browning films. Uh, and I don't want to watch the show. Yeah. Did anyone even watch the third movie that Brown did? Like, I feel like no one Haunting watched it because I've heard nothing about it. Haunting in Venice? Yeah, I didn't hear anything about it. It's on Hulu now. I'm considering taking a watch probably before we do our, you know, year-end wrap, wrap up in January, knock out a few more 2023 releases. That's probably what I'll do. I'll watch that towards the end of the year. Uh, but right now, no, I'm good. Uh, so, yeah, don't expect an episode on Poor Things, but uh, if I can make it happen, I will. Until then, uh, take it easy, keep watching movies, and we'll see you next time.